Hi everyone, Ollie here and welcome back once again to one of these weekly vlog videos. This is year two, week five at Warwick Medical School on the graduate entry program. So just really quickly, I've got a slightly different filming setup going on. I have managed to work out, I think, finally the Lumix GH4, so I'm shooting in 4K resolution, which is really cool. Got that all working. And you'll notice that I do wear these Rode microphones now for all my videos to do the audio, but I've bought all the relevant cables and adapters to allow me to get my audio directly into the camera so I don't have to sync in post anymore, which is really nice. So jumping right into Monday, it actually took us two hours to do the trip to hospital um, to go to George Eliot in Nuneaton. Normally it takes about 20 minutes. Uh, so we left the house at quarter past eight. We didn't arrive until about 10 past 10. Basically the M6 is an awful, awful road. I don't know what was going on, but the bits of junctions were closed, other bits weren't. It took us a long time to get there, but we listened to a lot of country music and we talked about a lot of medicine uh, on the way. So that was me and Ollie doing that. We did ring ahead. Um, so all they've told us to do, if we're gonna be late, ring ahead, let them know we're coming, which we did do just to not invoke uh, the anger of the management staff and all the staff that are meant to be looking after us as students. And uh, even though I did get there very, very late, I did arrive just in time uh, for my bedside teaching session to kind of end, I was asked to do um, an upper limb neuro exam, which I haven't done for quite a while, but I could remember how to do, I think, the bulk of. And it was really cool because I saw some signs that I've never seen before in patients, some of those rare signs that you read about, but you don't actually necessarily get to see. So I got to see some of these rare signs, uh, one of which is called pronator drift. So without bumping my microphone, you basically ask a patient to, to uh, hold their arms facing upwards like this kind of flat outwards in front of them. And if they can't hold that position, their arm will actually kind of, I'm trying to show you on the camera, will, will turn over like this. Um, so that's a pyramidal symptom. I've certainly never seen it, but it's one of those things you read about in textbooks sometimes. And uh, I also saw a thing called dis, dis diadochokinesia, I think it's called, where the patient can't do rapidly alternating movements. And the classical one is you ask the patient to do this with their hand. I obviously, <laughs> I absolutely can't tell what's in focus and what isn't right now, but you ask them to tap their hand like this backwards and forwards and the patient completely couldn't do it. Tuesday, not an awful lot happened, but we ran our first um, student seminar and I, I can't call it student seminar because I think technically what we're doing is a, a pirate seminar. Um, you had to apply for teaching positions to be part of the official uh, kind of rat ratified student seminar set up. Unfortunately, um, there were well, there were very many applications for not that many places. And uh, so we decided to just run a sort of, run one anyway, um, see who turns up. And we actually had a full house. I think we had 10 students by the end, which was really good. So we had 10 first years and they wanted me and Chris, who you've seen an interview with on this channel, to teach them some gut uh, anatomy, which Chris handled and some embryology. Uh, which I covered. So I looked at things like neurulation and the formation of the spinal cord and what happens when that goes wrong and you get things like spina bifida, talked about the developing blastocyst and how that forms um, into the, the kind of amniotic structure. It really does make you think actually, I'm really glad that we have made this decision to do this teaching because you have to re-go over the stuff from first year, like stuff that I haven't looked at for three or four months now and um, just look at it again in enough detail to actually teach it. But equally, it was really nice that, although I maybe didn't necessarily get it at the same time these guys would have, would have been taught it, um, I completely didn't get embryology, even though I'd done a lot of it in my undergrad degree. Um, looking back on it now and understanding the wider anatomy, particularly when you, you're looking at structures like pharyngeal arches, and dermatomal pathways, the movement of somites, um, these things. Now that I have kind of the wider understanding, it makes it a lot easier to place these very core concepts. So that's been an interesting experience. Again, Wednesday was a little bit quiet. This is virology week. Um, AC1, the block I'm in at the moment, is split into kind of a weird mishmash of topics, but just stuff we haven't had time to cover in a lot of depth. And virology actually is something I find super interesting so I'm pleased they didn't try and cram it into the first year and, and teach it badly 
it's actually been covered in a lot of depth, um, which I like. Virology is an area that I was actively considering going into um, if I was going to do a research career, so that's been nice. So at Thursday morning we had more virology, we were looking at things like HIV, uh, global infectious, dis infectious? infectious disease burden and like basic antiviral treatment. I think what else we were doing, we were selling uh, raffle tickets I think on Thursday lunchtime as well to raise money for NeuroSoc, just to raise money so we can have more high profile speakers and run more events and uh, so Lush um, very generously donated us uh, a load of their products that we could um, use to incentivize raffle ticket sales and we sold a lot. I think we sold a lot more to staff who were wandering by than we actually did to students because no students are carrying cash. But then in the afternoon we met our personal, it's either personal clinical tutor or clinical personal tutor, I think it's clinical personal tutor, CPT. Um, so in first year of Warwick Med School you get assigned a personal tutor and they're like a first point of contact pastoral um, person to kind of look after you and you can talk to if anything starts to go wrong. But now that we're moving into the clinical phase, particularly after Christmas, um, you get given a clinical personal tutor that's actually a member of clinical staff, uh, a doctor of some sort based in the hospital in which you are based. So I'm based at George Eliot Hospital in Nuneaton and uh, so our personal tutor is from there. He's an orthopaedic surgeon and so the group of I think eight or nine of us uh, got to meet him and he was really really nice kind of we had a sort of rough guideline as to what we were meant to achieve in in the hour-long session we had with him but he just kind of threw that to one side and and sort of just got to know us you know what do you do what did you find difficult about first year what did you enjoy what hobbies do you do like who are you and he seems very keen on getting to know us better um, through having us come into his theatre and do some shadowing which is really exciting for those who don't remember, I did my surgery induction a couple of weeks ago, that was in orthopaedics and I really enjoyed it. That was in foot though, um, this is a different area of the body. But what I feel that I want as we're approaching the more clinical phase is someone a bit more kind of career management, you know, how can I make the most out of my time, how can I study as efficiently as possible. Um, and I had a few concerns, you know, is it normal to go blank when you're on the wards and you kind of you do know the answer to something but you get flustered and he was really reassuring you know telling us you know there's a reason for this it's totally normal but you do get used to it it's just part of the ongoing process but then that evening we have the big event the medic family dinner um, so again I mentioned in the blog and videos and things last year I had a medic mum and dad um, me and Tom who you've seen on the channel bald guy with glasses we have two boys to look after in first year, so we have our medic sons, and we had basically a big family gathering. I think there were technically three generations of medic family there um, in Earlsdon at one of the houses. We had a massive meal, but a huge amount of credit has to go to Mr. Richard Lenton, um, who is in my year now, for doing an immense amount of planning and coordination and cooking the food, and it was just so delicious. It was four courses, I guess five courses if you include the cheese, if you, I can't even speak, if you include the cheese board. Um, so we had French onion soup to start, then duck liver pate and bread and salad and then um, I had a burger but like a handmade kind of chili burger with pulled pork, it was so good. Then profiteroles for dessert, all homemade then the cheese board after and there was just drink and it, it was so, so nice. A really, really pleasant evening. And we all decided that we were going to sing Old Lang Syne at incredible volume in the middle of October at, you know, getting on midnight. I'm sure everyone around us was probably very annoyed, but we had a nice time. Then Friday uh, was a bit of an unusual one. I'm recording this on Saturday, but I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. So yesterday for me, I got the Megabus to Nottingham uh, to go and meet my dad and my little brother Charlie uh, to go to a concert. We went to see a guitarist called Joe Bonamassa who is a, an American kind of blues rock guitar virtuoso, sort of very technically good, very fast.
and uh, this is my fourth time seeing him. The first time I saw him was in 2012 in Newcastle. I've seen him in Manchester and somewhere else, though I can't remember where the somewhere else was. It's maybe Birmingham. But uh, sorry, Nottingham, as good as ever. He's one of those people that sounds better than the album live, uh, which is really good. A kind of, it was a British blues uh, themed night. It was only about two hours, um, but so polished, just so, so good. It was nice to hang out with my family for a bit, had some food, just caught up on things. Uh, then I got the train back to Coventry this morning. So today I've been producing some video content. I'm going to be launching a new series this week, which is exciting because I need to keep my content production up. I'm going to be doing a, a what I'm reading sort of series. Uh, so they're going to be short, maybe only five, six minutes, but little reviews talking about whatever I'm reading at the moment. So at the moment, that's Better by Atul Gawande. At the moment I've read Being Mortal, which my friend Ikra got me as a birth... It was either a birthday or a Christmas present, but it was very delayed, so I can't remember which one of those it is. Um, but I'm reading that. Uh, better, so it's, it's Better, A Surgeon's Notes on Performance. And it's talking about why it's important to measure things like surgical performance, how you can measure things like diligence and why they're so important. He's talking about uh, the eradication of polio or the attempts to do it and how all that's coordinated, the changes in military surgery and how that all has to be coordinated. Very, very complicated and awe-inspiring, but it's been really good and I think I'll actually finish it today. So that's probably going to be the first of these videos. Normally I would have recorded these videos on a Sunday at the very end of the week. I think what I'm going to do now, just so I can keep my output up, is record them on a Saturday and then, because I'm going to go to uni on Sundays to do work, have that as an academic day, so I'm going to upload it from uni on the Sunday, which I think should allow me to do the videos a bit more regularly and space them better, because I'm not in uni on a Monday. Um, it would have to wait until a Tuesday, and by then it's midweek, and I could have put a different video in that slot, and so on. I think this will just be a bit easier to manage. I've got a lot more interviews coming, so now I've got two cameras, I can have a side angle, got the lights, got the microphones, I think it's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to doing the next lot of interviews as well. We're still on with organising this conference, I've got a committee uh, together, so that's looking like it is going to go ahead. I'm unsure whether it's going to be the Saturday or the Sunday, leaning towards the Sunday now, the 2nd of December, because it's basically going to shut down the entire medical school in terms of room bookings so that might be easier to do on the Sunday. We're also in the process of establishing a student magazine here at Warwick, which is really exciting. There are a few of us who have publishing backgrounds. I did a lot of work um, with the newspaper at Newcastle University, the student paper there. I've written freelance for quite a long time and done freelance graphic design publishing work. Um, and that's something I'm really excited to, to put into motion. There's a lot of people what the nice thing about it is there's a lot of people that have come and spoken to me and other members of the team that they have ideas actively about things they really want to write but there was just no platform where they could guarantee a readership but this is going to be hopefully print as well as online so all you guys will be able to read the things and it's going to be aimed at medical students and those interested in medicine and healthcare uh, across the country not just at Warwick students it's going to be done by Warwick medical students but it's hopefully going to have that universal medical appeal. We're talking about health news, uh, developments, drug trials, research that people are doing at Warwick. Um, but alongside the academic stuff, a lot of people want to do op-eds, talking about things like the stigma surrounding mental health, um, rare specialties that you've maybe never heard of, but you might consider, interviews with clinicians and um, well-being stuff as well. So someone's wanting to do a thing on ketogenic recipes. Um, we've just had a lot of uh, yoga, things like yoga, Nutritank, Society's Launch at Warwick. So there's a lot of well-being and health, healthy eating, mindfulness stuff we can put in. So I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a great platform and I'm looking forward to sharing that with all of you when it comes to fruition. I've got a mock interview coming tonight, which I'm looking forward to. I've been able to read a lot of your personal statements and that's been really nice as well. I'm really not sure how long I'm gonna be able to keep up the mock interview thing doing it by myself. I think 
basically the burden is getting to be a bit too much. It's really nice and I've really enjoyed it. It's been fantastic and I'm going to continue to do it, but I'm going to have to slow the rate at which I'm offering the mock interviews because they do take time to prepare for. And what I honestly think I'm going to do is set up a conglomerate of medical students, maybe set up a website or start a new project or something where I can kind of distribute that workload because then I think everyone gets the most out of it. We can produce some shared resources, some marking proformers and stations, things like that. It's something that I am really keen to keep going, but I think it needs to become a bigger project. I can't do it by myself anymore, unfortunately. But this is all stuff for the future. I'm in AC1, I still have to do all my medical work and I'm, I'm not that great at keeping on top of that when I've got all these other exciting projects to think about. But I think that's where I'm going to wrap this, guys, before I ramble on. So thank you very much for watching. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com for my daily blog of med school life here at Warwick Medical School. Take care and I'll see you around.